All right, everybody, good afternoon. I've got 12.30 on my watch, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, first off, we definitely wanna thank you uh, for attending our presentation this afternoon. Uh, we know that uh, Tableau Conference is, is fairly fresh thus far, and you, you had a lot of opportunity for a lot of other training, so uh, we really appreciate you being here with us today. Um, before we get our presentation started, I kinda wanna pose a question to the entire room and or ask if this really sounds familiar. So think about a time that you might have had a project uh, given to you. Um, member of leadership says, hey, I've got this really groundbreaking project that I want you to work on, but I really need to make sure that you stay focused on it. And you know, the deadline is pretty tight, so I need to make sure that you get this done in a timely manner. Well, first feeling you should have is, wow, I'm honored that you selected me to do this, this project. And you think, you know what, I'm gonna sit down at my desk, I'm gonna work diligently, you know, I'm gonna throw my headphones on, I'm gonna make sure that I'm focused, I'm gonna make sure that nobody bothers me. You start building a dashboard in Tableau. You start putting together a couple of visits, maybe do some level of detailed calculations. You're working really hard. You're now bought into the project. You say, yeah, this is really cool. I'm going to change the way that we do business here. You're working super hard and then all of a sudden, what happens? Every single time, phone rings. Somebody taps you on the shoulder. There's a manager or business analyst or somebody within the company that comes and distracts you. And of course that distraction is an ad hoc request. Hey, I've got a meeting in two hours and I need some data to present on or else I'm gonna look like a fool. I'm gonna have egg on my face. So your first knee-jerk knee reaction, especially as a, maybe a, a visualization developer is, well, you know, I, I am a resource for you, but why am I always your go-to? Why, why do I always find myself doing these ad hoc requests for you? You know, you've got a timeline, I'm working on this heavy project, I've got to drop everything that I'm doing to help you out. And you know what, you get kind of frustrated because you start to realize, hey, I do this so frequently for you, I know that I've already answered this question for you and I'm sure I built a dashboard for this. So I bet if you go into our server and you go into this dashboard and you look right here, you go, oh, shoot, I didn't build anything for you. Because I don't have the time, we don't have the time to sit there and build everything that everybody asks us for, right? So then you have egg on your face because you got a little bit frustrated with the analyst. You had to stop your project so you don't get to finish what you wanted to finish. And then above the rest, you realize that their question could not have been answered other than coming to you to ask the question. And the most frustrating, frustrating part about that is, on the back end, that person, they don't necessarily want to bother you, but they're forced to. So, I don't know if this sounds familiar. As a developer with DISH, with the sales department of DISH, this was a common occurrence. Us as visual, visualization developers, we would have to drop everything that we are doing to help out on ad hoc requests. And we understand that we are expected to do that to some degree, but it became too frequent. So we tried to figure out a way, we tried to develop an idea of how to solve this problem. So what we're gonna present on today is something that we came up with called iQuery. And now before I get into iQuery, what I wanna do is take some time, introduce myself and the two gentlemen up here with me. My name is Patrick Carwin. I am a corporate um, learning and development trainer with the DISH. I have the unique opportunity to introduce all of our corporate hires to the company put them through a four week training course and uh, let them learn the culture and the overall business at DISH. So you might be a little confused asking yourself why is a learning and development trainer sitting up here talking to us about data visualization, data analytics, so on and so forth. He doesn't know anything about this. He's just got a pretty beard. <laughs> no. Uh, not, too, not so long ago, I was an actual uh, Tableau developer for our sales team. And that team was actually managed uh, by the gentleman to my right here, Mr. Sean Payton, who I'll have introduce himself. Hey, everyone. I'm Sean. Hey, everyone. Yep. Okay, you guys can hear me? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm Sean, uh, and I, first of all, I want to really apologize if, if anybody was expecting to see the New Orleans Saints head coach in here. Um, I was hoping maybe he moonlined it as a DISH employee as well as coaching the Saints. Um, so I am sorry if I am a disappointment. But, uh, I manage Patrick along with, uh, and, and uh, since he's moved on, a team of six Tableau developers. Um, we manage three Tableau server sites. I've been working in Tableau since 2014. Um, and uh, the last gentleman on stage here developed iQuery, and when he presented to it to me, 
I was smart enough to steal the idea from him. So the brilliant John Crawford. Thank you, Sean. Um, so yeah, I'm John Crawford. I'm uh, kind of injured right now, so I'm trying to stay off my feet a little bit, pull the Achilles tendon, playing football. Uh, kind of stupid of me, but um, that being said, I'm a senior operations analyst uh, in the in-home services department at DISH. Um, I'm resp responsible for all reporting and analytics uh, for our fulfillment wing. So I'm actually in the line of business um, <clears throat> where our technicians will go out and restore service, install installations, sales, things like of that nature. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, gentlemen. So before we kind of uh, stood on our soapbox and introduced ourselves, I introduced this idea that uh, we have branded as iQuery. So you all might be asking yourself, hey, I came to a Tableau web authoring presentation. What the heck is this iQuery? Well, in a stripped down, just basic form, iQuery is Tableau web authoring. We are using this tool and we've rebranded it on purpose. Um, and we've created a solution for our end users now, our main end users at DISH are going to be business analysts, analysts that might not be familiar with coding, analysts that might not know how to work in databases, analysts that would probably be very, very quick to crash a database or server. These are people that don't necessarily play around with data or visualizations a whole lot, but they have a whole lot of questions about it. So what we decided to do is use iQuery and empower these people to answer their own questions. This freed up time for our, us as developers to work on those projects that were a little bit more meaningful to us, um, that would help kind of drive the business instead of just answering simple questions. And then most importantly, we realized in working with this solution that not only did we solve two problems, we also solved a third because our IT team was always concerned about security and integrity of our databases. Well, we realized that's also solved with using this application of iQuery. So before we get a little bit further into it, I'm actually going to pass things over to Sean. And Sean um, is going to let us know a little bit more about iQuery and what we mean by it. Um, we're going to go into some application and let you guys know how we are actually using it within DISH as the company. Um, John is going to explain an awesome, awesome use case about a year ago uh, that this really saved our bacon, for lack of a better term. And um, I would be lying if I said that we were super successful with this right off the bat. Um, Engagement was not so great at the beginning, but it did ramp up. We found some steps for success, and we want to share that with you guys this afternoon to uh, identify if you guys are looking to build your own or maybe you have your own web authoring server that um, you can avoid some of the pitfalls that we entered into. So I'm going to pass things over to Sean to explain what iQuery is. Hey, uh, thanks again. So uh, just wanted to uh, first get a show of hands. Who in here is using Tableau Web Authoring today? OK, it's funny. Every time I did this in my head, I said about half we are going to be in here. So for the half that aren't, we just want to first share with you guys what is Tableau Web Authoring? What are we talking about? So really quick, what is iQuery? It's Tableau Web Authoring. It's actually just a blank dashboard. It's going to be the easiest dashboard you're ever going to build. So, how, so this may look a whole lot like desktop, and that's because in Tableau Web Authoring, you, can, you get into an environment that has about 75% of the desktop functionality. So if you're not familiar with how you actually get to this screen on Tableau server, um, I'm just going to walk you through really fast. It's, it's really easy. You're going to first go to a project. In this case, we have our iQuery environments uh, in, a, in a project. So you just click on that. And then we have some very boring dashboards. They're boring intentionally because it's all about getting people into a blank environment. So there's just a little bit of information that just tells how fresh the data is, basically. So we're going to click on an environment that hopefully you guys would sort of be able to relate to. It's just Tableau usage. Who went to what dashboard on what day? Data we pull right out of the server, right? And the, you can see this is about the most worthless dashboard you've ever been to. Um, you have a, hey, the data is through. Uh, in this case, I took this screenshot about a, a month ago, um, right? And you can do nothing with it. That's because you're not supposed to use it like this. You're supposed to use it in web offering. So if we click on that Edit button right there, it will then load us into an environment like this. So that's all that we're talking about. That is just as far as how you logistically get there. And then for the half of you in the room that already knew this, we will move on from this very quickly. <laughs> Setting permissions is really easy. So as long as your group or, or your user has web, the web edit checked for that particular dashboard, then they can get into that environment. So that's all it takes. So how do we use iQuery? 
So we, we sort of approach it on a three-step. They're sort of beginner, intermediate, and advanced PyQuery users. Um, so the first way that we use it is just a substitute for SQL. So Carwin touched on it a little bit earlier. Right, if, if some of those business analysts that aren't typical, you know, aren't part of the analytics teams are using this and have SQL database access, it's because they need to sort of nimbly be able to get to and manipulate data, right? And all they're trying to do when they have SQL access is just run a query, get the results, move it into Excel, and move on with their day. Well, using iQuery, we can do the same sort of thing. So, this is a very simple dashboard to build. And we're just trying to answer a very, very simple question here. Which dashboard had the most unique users this month? Right? And we've got just a few pills to move around. We're going to take dashboard, drag it to rows. We're going to take unique users from the measures, drag it to columns, and then use date and filter for the current month. And we've got our, we've got our data. Tableau is doing actually more than we need it to do here because it's a data visualization software. So it's trying to visualize data. We just need to move into Excel. Um, but we've got this built, right? So in order to get into Excel, we just click here, choose cross tab. It's going to download locally. And that's exactly how it looks coming out. So it's, it, it's a substitute for SQL. Uh, so users getting exactly the same end product they would get if they had ac access to the actual SQL database. But let's think about that a little bit more. What would it take to write this query in SQL? So this is what they'd have to do before iQuery, right? And they would have to know how to concatenate workbook and views to make that dashboard. They'd have to know how to write account distinct as unique users, right? And then they'd know how to group it. So this is fairly, even though it's only five lines of code, this takes some skill to actually do, even though it was a very, very simple question we were trying to answer. So this would probably, for these guys, our experience is they would, they would have to be given this script. And then what happens if data moves around and it stops running? They come to you and say, fix my query, right? Um, but even more than that, you know, it, for these users that have it, and Carwin, I think, touched on this earlier, right? There's some exposure. If, if they don't know what they're doing, they can bring the whole database down. And that happened to us. The worst th people can do in iQuery is crash their own browser. All right. So the second way we use it, once users can get, they're familiar with the data set, they can get the numbers correctly, then we can use Tableau a little bit more like it's uh, intended as an actual data visualization software. So in this example, um, we're just looking at Tableau views for across three sites uh, for a bunch of, right, for, for about two years of data. And we're getting a heartbeat effect here, right? Because usage goes up during the week and comes down during the day. So we're just looking at a daily count across three sites. Pretty easy to, to build. We're just you know rows to on the number of views, exact date for the date column, and then uh, filtering and coloring by site to get this view. So one of the cool things about this, of course, you can teach them how to use Tableau as an actual as as data visualization at this point. But, you, but one of the things you can do with at this stage is also teach them how table calculations can really do a lot of the hard work for them. So does anybody know like, how we could get rid of this heartbeat effect? What could we do? What table calculation could we run that would allow us to get rid of that heartbeat effect? Moving average. Moving average. Thank you, Alex. Smart guy here, Alex. <laughs> He's 100% right. And, it's, and you're going to do it just like you do it in desktop. You're going to. Open up the pill, choose quick table calculation, choose moving average, and then we found for this a two-week moving average looks really great. So 13 days, or 13, and there we go. Now we can really see what's going on. You can see that our sales BI site has really jumped up this year. Super, super easy to understand what's going on with these three sites now. So how do you get that out? And, and download it and get it into a PowerPoint. You just click up here again, go to image, download locally, and now you can paste it into a, tab, uh, into a PowerPoint presentation. They can do this without your help. They can do this on their own. Or they can attach it to an email. Data team's killing it. Here's the data to prove it. <laughs> <laughs>
But one of the biggest things that we found, because all those things are available in Excel, and what we found is these analysts tend to really be used to working in Excel, and that's kind of where they naturally gravitate to. Well, they can't do a map in Excel. So the ability for these guys to do mapping is huge. What would it take for them to do maps without uh, iQuery, without Tableau Web Offering? They'd have to have expensive software like MapPoint or ArcGIS. They know how to use it, right? They can do this all now in iQuery. So once they're used to building visualizations, then the next step, of course, is to build dashboards, right? That's also all possible in here. You can build their own dashboards. So this is an actual dashboard created in iQuery. Uh, as you can see, we have usage by site, top dashboards by user. It's all filterable. It's not the fanciest dashboard ever, but it, it's very functional. Again, it can be published and shared with iQuery users. So once they create that environment, they just go to, excuse me, save as up here. Choose the project that they want to move it into. And then now we're consuming it as an as a end user in Tableau server. So you can see we can filter my site, just click on there, right? All the same stuff that I'm sure you guys know how to, you guys obviously know how to build dashboards. So, so you, now with this, I will caution you, right? And some of you may be thinking, and it's smartly, um, maybe you're as smart as Alex here, that, um, hey, I may not want to do this. We have brand standards, we have you know, best practices, letting an end user turn this on and publish it to the server may not be the best thing for me. And that all totally makes sense. In fact, in sales, this isn't something we're allowing our users to do today. But in IHS, in John's department, in the installation, it is something they've done. And in fact, they had a huge, huge win. Uh, and he wants to tell that story. So John. Awesome. Thank you, Sean. <clears throat> all right. If I can get the, uh, there we go, all right. So just to kind of rewind, um, going back to September of 2017, uh, the island of Puerto Rico was hit by a hurricane, okay? Uh, I'm sure everybody knows that. I'm sure it's all over the news. Everybody's heard about it. They're still report, you know, restoring power and things of that nature. Um, but for those of you who don't know, um, hurricanes are not good for satellite dishes, okay? <laughs> all right, so I, I just want you to think about kind of, kind of what a hurricane would do to satellite dishes and equipment and so on and so forth. So uh, I want to give some high-level stats of kind of how we used I iQuery to help with the recovery and restoration effort. So um, over 60,000 customers lost their service once the uh, island got hit by the, the, the hurricane. Um, and these weren't just, you know, repointing the dish. I mean, the dish was wiped off the house. These were full installations, okay? Um, iQuery allows us to effectively manage cost and inventory to uh, support the recovery effort. And it also allowed us to save a lot of money on the transportation of the vehicles to the island, okay? All right, so um, this picture, just to kind of describe what it is, this is a picture of the folks that are just jumping with joy that they got vans shipped to their offices, okay? So we were literally putting vans, dish vans, on boats and shipping them to the island because the vans that were there, a lot of them were damaged beyond repair. They couldn't actually recover the service because they couldn't drive to the customer's homes to, to put the, the equipment back on. So. Um, as you can see, there's just there's true uh, kind of excitement there. I want to describe some very specific situations where we were able to empower our analysts to make key decisions by having data insights uh, that made this kind of possible, okay? All right, so this dashboard is a very uh, simplistic dashboard. This was actually developed by one of our iQuery users, okay? Um, so I, I want you to think about it uh, from a logistics perspective. How many ad hocs, how much analysis, how many decisions do we have to make uh, in order to kind of facilitate this effort, okay? So our, our folks, the inventory folks, the fleet folks, they're very smart people, but they're not necessarily data people, okay? So basically what we did is we empowered them by giving them an iQuery. We gave them an inroad, a sandbox to play in so that they can answer their own questions, okay? So in this particular case, uh, we're managing inventory and we're also managing costs. So some of the other things that they did, uh, they were able to identify the technicians. And I'll go over some stats in just a little bit. Um, but we sent almost 200 technicians down there. Now, technicians to go to Puerto Rico, we want to incentivize them, right? So there's monetary benefit for them to go down there. But before we offer that incentive to, to folks, we have to kind of analyze their information and make sure that they're one top performers, 
Two, that they're Spanish-speaking customers. Like, for example, me, no opla, I, I wouldn't do any good down there, right? So we want to send our best of the best people down there, make sure they have the right skills to kind of you know, interact with the people and get them back up as quickly as possible. Now, also, a, a, a lot of folks are kind of like, well, it's satellite TV. You know, I, I don't know if that's a, necessarily a critical service to have you know, once we get hit with a hurricane, hurricane. But if you think about it, where are you getting all your information about the most up-to-date information? You're getting it from your television, generally speaking, right, in Puerto Rico? So that, that actually is affecting your life. Not having television is affecting their day-to-day -day lives during this time, okay? So it is really a big deal. Um, so again, just to give you some, some basic stats, we had 14 um, inventory and fleet analysts, and we on my team only had five people. So the five folks on my team could not keep up with the amount of requests that would be required, the amount of analysis that are required, to kind of do all of this, okay? Right, that's on top of your normal job. That's in addition to that, so, so to put it in perspective, you're now taking a 40, 50 hour a week analyst and turning them into an 80 hour a week analyst, okay? It's just not possible, it's, it's uh, you know, overworking your analyst is never good, you're gonna get bad insights, so on and so forth. So, um, again, giving them a very basic overview of kind of how iQuery works, showing them how to answer their own questions, it, it made us more effective in terms of responding to the relief effort, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, look at some other things. Okay, so we, during the uh, recovery effort, were able to ship about $2 million in inventory. And that's over about a 90-day period. It's about a 90-day kind of a, a effort that we did, and we got all these customers restored. $2 million is a ton of inventory. Uh, to put it in perspective, that's around 11 times what we typically would, would send uh, to Puerto Rico during that, that time frame. Um, so, so a lot of equipment being shipped. 69,000 customers were restored. Like I said, it's not just go out and repoint your dish because the wind moved it a little bit. It's, hey, the dish is gone. Uh, so it's it more of an installation kind of recovery effort. Um, 174 technicians traveled to Puerto Rico. Like I said, we only wanted to send the best of the best. We don't want to send people down there that are maybe problematic employees or maybe not productive. We want to get the, the most uh, bang for the, the buck, for lack of a better term. Um, and then the cost savings. So this is a very interesting uh, cost savings, but we, we were able to actually look at some of the data in iQuery and say, okay, if we ship these vehicles on a Sunday, we actually save $4,000 per unit than if we did it on any other day of the week. So things of that nature that you wouldn't even think about, right? Because we're not, generally speaking, dish isn't in the business of shipping vehicles overseas, but we do it if we have to do it, right? And so it was very insightful and we were able to make some really key critical decisions that saved the company money in addition to restoring our customers. And you have to also remember, I mean, from a, a customer perspective, if, if you're not able to restore their service very quickly, they're gonna go to another provider if, if another provider's available, okay? All right, so um, I'm gonna turn it over to Sean uh, and Patrick, sorry. There we go. Thank you, John. Thank you. Plain injured here today, so yeah. really appreciate it. Yeah. All right, so steps for success. So before, we do wanna walk you, I think we alluded to this earlier, we have a few things that, that if you're, can, hopefully we've kinda of convinced you that this might be something to, to consider. And if you do try to stand up your own environment, some things to do to make it successful. But first we wanna to prove to you that it really is successful. We know you guys are data analysts and numbers are gonna matter. So we wanted to show you guys some of our actual stats of what we've done. So, like I mentioned before, John was earlier than, it was John's idea, so they got started about 15 months ahead of sales, which is my department, but we've only got a handful of environments. There's only seven environments. And then we only have 78 unique users. So we have thousands of users on our server. So this, this doesn't go to everybody, right? This just goes to a select few. But look at the number of views that those guys are generating. And, and there, we're probably well past 7,000 now because we ran these numbers last week. And then, and then estimated hours saved. So here, it's, it is a total estimate. It would be very difficult to like try to track everybody's time, every day they got in here, and how much time are you saving. So what we did is we said, we think it's about 15 minutes every time somebody comes in and uses this. And that may sound a little aggressive, but think about this. How much time does it take two people to communicate on what they need, what data needs to be pulled, right? It takes, if it took about five minutes every time, we were already at 10 minutes between those two people. And that's before we even ran any data. So we think 15 minutes is fairly conservative. 17,000 or 1,700 hours translates into about 208 hour workdays. We've saved a ton of time. 
But it's not really about the, how do you get people to be engaged? It's about how they have to like iQuery, right? They have to like the product. Bryce was kind enough to let us share this quote that he uh, sent from me. He's one of our top users in sales in iQuery. And you can read the quote, but basically it's increased his stature. Inside of his team, he is now the go-to guy for data. It's no longer my team, the developers. It's, he's kind of taken on that role. Um, and not only is he, has it increased his stature within his team, but it's also made him realize that, hey, getting involved in Tableau and data visualization might even be an avenue in his career. So he loves the product. So as much as you're going to love it as a developer, uh, saving all that time, your end users too could also really, really pick, really, really enjoy it. So now that we've hopefully shown you that, hey, we know what we're doing, um, we want to go over how did we get here and how can you avoid some of the same pitfalls that we did when we first started this. So I'm going to toss it back over to Carwin and we'll wrap this thing up. All right. So you've already heard us say it a few times here. Um, we did not start off super successfully, which was really weird. As uh, developers, we thought, hey, we're going to give people this tool. Uh, they're going to be ad early adopters with it. They're just going to use the heck out of it. And that wasn't the case. And we couldn't figure out why. So we kind of identified some pitfalls that we ran into or some issues uh, that caused this not to really um, hit the ground running. And it really boiled down to the three things up on screen here. So I'm going to go over these three steps for success with you. First one being cleaning up your environment. Now, what do I mean by that? Everybody in this room, we're at Tableau Conference. We're data people, right? We understand what raw data sets look like. Over on the left-hand side of iQuery, you can see that we've got a raw data set. It's all capitalized. There's underscores in between words. It's not very pretty. Now, we all might look at this and say, OK, I get it. It's a raw data set. Cool. But think about the end users that we've been talking about, these business analysts that aren't in databases a lot, that they don't understand what they're looking at. This could be confusing to them. Not to mention that this data set has millions of rows of data in it as well. So it can get really confusing really quickly. So what we mean by clean up your environment is just that. Take all the confusion out of it. We took the raw data set and we threw it into folders. We identified um, some, some key metrics that people might need to look into and we simply just categorized them. On top of that, we made vanity titles for everything. We made sure everything looks pretty, got rid of all, our, all of our underscores. We put the proper case sense on all of the data lines. And you might seem, it might seem like this is you know, real mundane type stuff, but it really did help us in the long run. Because when we first launched it, we didn't do anything with our data. We just left it raw, and people got confused. So up on screen here, we've got our raw data set on the left. We've got our cleaned up environment on the right. A um, couple other things to point out. There might be information within this data set that you don't want your end users to have. Well, as you develop the environment, be cognizant of that. And if there are certain lines of data that you don't want people to have access to, don't give them access to it. You can remove that. So clean up the environment and make sure they're not playing with things that they shouldn't be. Or if there's irrelevant information within that data set, get rid of it to help them out. Within this specific data set, we actually noticed that one of our um, lines, uh, Tableau, identified as a measure, it's actually a timeline. It's a dimension. So to help people out a little bit, we went ahead and moved that. As developers, we understand how to do this. An end user of iQuery would not. So help them out a little bit. And last but not least, we created a lot of calculations for them. We identified all the questions that we got asked all the time. All these ad hoc requests for the meeting that happens in two hours, we identified what numbers that they needed. We did the pre-calculations, so now all they have to do is drag and drop. They just drag a pill. We saw how easy it was to extract it into a cross tab. They have the information that they need at their disposal, which is really cool. So just clean up your data. It's not that difficult, and it will save you a lot of hassle in the long run. Second step for success, and again, this is going to seem kind of mundane, kind of, well, no duh, Patrick. Like, you can't, can't launch anything without training, right? Well, yeah, we launched training. We got people together for about an hour and said, hey, this is the lay of the land. This is kind of how you use this environment of iQuery, and we set them free. And we realized people weren't using it the way that we intended them to. They got confused, and we scratched our heads going, well, we, we gave you an hour. We, we taught you how to do all this stuff. 
it's a light version of desktop, so it's not that difficult, right? Well, then we identified that, yes, we taught them how to use it, but we didn't check for understanding. So really, this slide should more say, hold a workshop. So we identified a one-on-one -on -one workshop to where not only did we train all of our end users on how to use iQuery, we got them into a real environment. So we asked them all to bring their machines into the training room, asked them a few questions when they got into the environment. So if you could tell me how many activations a certain local retailer had for Dish within Q3 of 2018, what do you get? Everybody would go through, start dragging their pills, they would try to identify the answer, and as soon as everybody got it correct, then it was that check for understanding that we realized that yes, they're starting to get it and understand it. Lo and behold, once they started to get into the environment and play around with it, they then self-identified that they wanted more. So we didn't have the idea of doing any further training after just showing them the product, but then they came to us and said, this is awesome and we want more. So then we started to think about what Sean was talking about. Yes, it is Tableau. It's a visualization tool. So why don't we test this out and see if these end users, instead of using it as a substitute for SQL or code writing, let's give them the ability to start building some visualizations. So you can see here, started mapping some things out, actually started to build some vizs, and then eventually, if we want to, we could light those up and have them publish their own dashboards on server, which it doesn't steal from any of our jobs. It's enhancing and supplementing our jobs. And last step for success that we can give you guys is to give the product or give the tool a name. So this entire time, the title of our presentation references Tableau Web Authoring. We haven't really talked about Tableau Web Authoring this entire time, but we have. So we titled this iQuery for the simple fact that with Dish, it's a huge company. There are a lot of products within the Tableau environment. You've got Tableau Server, you've got Tableau Desktop, we've got Tableau, Tableau Web Authoring. And unfortunately, throughout our company, the term Tableau is kind of an all-encompassing, everybody just kind of throws it around, and we don't really know what the heck they're talking about sometimes. So we decided to brand it and give it an actual title. So that way, if Sean was interrupted by an analyst, calls him on the phone and says, hey, you know what, I was trying to build a level of detail calculation with an iQuery, the light bulb goes off for Sean and he understands what product they're actually talking about. We're no longer talking about Tableau because who knows what that is sometimes, but we're talking about iQuery. So is it the best name in the world? Eh. Are we in copyright infringement with Apple? Eh, maybe. <laughs> Anybody work for Apple? No? We good? Okay, awesome. Pretty much what we're getting at is it doesn't have to be fancy. Um, you can steal our title if you really want it, but it did really help for us to properly brand this because now it is an actual tool for our users. Um, they don't just think of it as being, oh, that's another dashboard that I can go and get a, a report in Tableau for, in Tableau Server. So, three simple steps. That's all it took. But what we don't show you is that those three simple steps took us about 18 months to figure out. Um, but with that, ultimately, it's exactly what we're allowing our end users to do is play in a sandbox. It is a light version of Tableau Desktop. No license is required. And really what we're doing is we're empowering our developers to really focus on what they should be focused on while also letting our end users have a little bit of fun and playing around in their own data. They can start answering the questions that they have. So with that meeting that's in two hours, all they have to do is get into iQuery, pull their answers, pop it into their own PowerPoint, and there was no communication necessary. So with that, again, we do appreciate you guys uh, spending time with us this afternoon. We do have a little bit of time left in our session. Um, we would like to open it up for a Q&A session. I've got a mic, I've got a mic, hot mic. Hot mic, <laughs> coming in. Do you allow anyone to publish or do you limit to certain users or anyone can just publish? publish actual dashboards. Right. So in sales, we have not allowed that. Um, however, in IHS or John's department, he has. We do. So we provision, we provision uh, permission for the project level, and then we give everybody on that specific team the ability to publish to that project. So they can only publish to their one project, but yeah, everybody on the team can do that. How do you monitor or manage that at all? Like if there's too many getting on there? 
Uh, we kind of rely on the end users to do self-governance. Uh, we found that there's a lot of repetition across their dashboards, and um, sometimes they actually are answering the same question in two different ways. Um, so we try to give them some guidelines to, yeah, sorry, I think my, my mic might have died on me here. <laughs> Sorry. Is that for them? Okay. Um, yeah, so, so to your point, uh, they can potentially put a lot of garbage in their site and want to try to control that. Um, we relied on the team and the management team of that team uh, to kind of, um, kind of police their own analysts. Um, the good news is, as far as like the dashboards, they don't, dashboards themselves do not consume a lot of physical space on the server. So it's okay if there's 20, 30 workbooks. It's when there's multiple data sources, that's when, that's when I get kind of bailed out by our IT team. So the number of workbooks we're fine with, we just want to make sure that everybody kind of manages their own stuff. So, yeah. And what we do in sales in lieu of that is if somebody builds something they really like, we just have them take a screenshot of their uh, iQuery screen, and we basically have a map to building the same thing. right? And one of our big differences is most of sales is centralized in Denver, where we're based out of whereas um, IHS or in-home services is spread out throughout the country. So that's one of the differences in our groups and why we've sort of chosen one way versus the other. There's a lot. Yeah, then a lot of questions. Pick? You guys pull it. We're going to smart Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, so with the announcement of Ask Data, how do you see that progressing? Would it sort of replace it because, well, you you don't really have to use drag and drop anymore? Or would you roll it out to more people because you actually can give it to, I don't know, XX who might not know how to drag and drop pills? Why are you asking the learning and development trainer? <laughs> I'm gonna pass it to the, no, I'm just kidding. I don't know, we'll have to see how it works, right? I mean, it looks cool. Like how, how well does it actually work with our data? You know, how much governance on the back end does it take to get that to work right? Um, those are all open questions, right? So I think he's got a follow up, Lucas. No, just because you, you did a lot of the, of the grunt work already, you renamed your fields, you, you made sure that's all consistent, so I think that's probably a pretty good basis to go for that. Good. Yeah, we're good at our jobs, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> awesome. Another question? Lucas, up here. Yes, I'll Just now. shout. Mm -hmm. Hi, so for training, how many hours of training? I know you started with one hour and that didn't work, but after that, how many, tra how many hours are you doing of training? Once we got into the workshop mode, it, it legitimately was about another hour session. That, that's all it took. So again, we just kind of identified the lay of the land of the environments, and then it was that check for understanding to make sure that we just didn't teach them, and then they ran away and didn't know what they were doing. They taught back to us and kind of showed us, yes, we understand the application of this now, and that's really all it took. So just identify that they understand what they're doing but it made, made a difference. Your environment could be different, right? It's depending on how much you want to do or if you have to cover more than one data set, right? I mean, it's, that's all, it's all up to you, whatever you feel so like. So how many data sets are you guys, how many data sets are you In sales, on? we just really have two, and they're almost the same. Okay. So, so we only had one big data set to cover over that one hour. Um, the one thing I will say, though, is for two reasons, keep your user groups pretty small. Like, so where we have seen it actually crash on us in just iQuery, which isn't that big of a deal, but um, when we have multiple people trying to do exactly the same thing on the server at the same time, we, it will sometimes fail. Um, so, the, you, so you want to keep that group small so to have, minimize that chance, um, but also so that you can make sure to go around to everybody's computer and are you getting the right answer? If you have a group of 15, right, it's easy for that person to kind of slink back and not get the answer and not really say, hey, I think I couldn't figure this out, right? It's kind of, it can be, uh, when everybody around them is figuring it out and they're not, like, it can be a challenge. Right, so. I still have this on. How did you decide deployment? <laughs> <laughs> How did we decide yeah, what? Like, deployment, teams to target. Like, would you, would you, would you decide, like, let me do all It's a great question. I, I think we were lucky enough to where they kind of self-identified themselves. So we identified people that were asking all these ad hoc questions and trying to figure out why are they asking this Again, is it because they are being forced to? And the answer ultimately was yes. Um, they didn't have a resource, so we identified, hey, maybe you would be a good end user of this. Many questions, I'm, I'm thrilled, this is awesome. Uh, what, what type of uh, server considerations did you have to take uh, into account? I knew we were going to get this question. Uh -huh. we almost and I can't answer it, but John can. Just about <laughs> interacting and also people web authoring. Just 
sure. Um, yeah, I can kind of take that one. So we we have um, we have eight cores. Uh, we have. Well, let me step back. Um, is your is your question about how it performs or about our server configuration? Because uh, quite honestly, the only time we see it crash is when there's 15 people kind of uh, editing the same workbook at the same time. Uh, but as far as like performance goes, y y it's typical performance. So everybody that's using iQuery is getting the same performance that everybody using all of our other dashboard is getting. Um, so is, is that does that kind of answer your question, or is your question more along like? Is there a specific server configuration that's ideal for iQuery? Okay. <laughs> we can talk more if you have some follow-up. Yeah, absolutely. We, After we, we don't, there, there were no considerations on the server side for when we deployed iQuery. It was, let's, we have a use case, let's give, give the data to the folks, and let's see how it performs. And we haven't had any, any detrimental issues as far as performance goes with it. Got everybody starts with the Absolutely. So, so the way, and I'll just go into that a little bit, but the way that we, in, in IHS, that's where, what, what group I'm in, uh, the way that we kind of organize our data is it's like one data source per metric. So like we have sales, we have installation, we have repair. There's, there's one kind of all-encompassing view of all the, the elements, the dimensions that you want to see for that, that particular metric, and then there's an iQuery per, per, per data set, and that's how we kind of manage it. And then as far as propagating uh, the users, we just kind of tell, you know, everybody, this is what's out there. You can answer all your own ad hoc questions. Here's the, the and then give it an intuitive name, obviously. You want to say, this is the sales iQuery, this is the training iQuery, so on and so forth. So that's kind of how we organize it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, question. So when you're identifying all those users, so we've got about 400 uh, licensed users. And did you identify within each department which one you were going to allow? web authoring? Yeah, so, uh, well, there's two things with sales, and John can talk a little bit more about his world, but for us, it's oh, really two things are required. One, they have to, because of the sales data is super, uh, the sales data that we're giving them is so rich, they have to sign an insider trader agreement. So that has to be signed in order to get access to that data, and then they need to go through our training. So once they do those two things, we'll turn them on. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Energy out of it. <laughs> Mic check one two. All right, it's working. Yeah. So sorry, just to kind of piggyback back off what Sean was saying. Um, for us to identify folks uh, that would be good iQuery candidate users, um, what we really do is we say, can our existing dashboards answer your questions? If they say yes, then they're not really needing an iQuery, for lack of a better term. So what, what we do for that is, like inventory, for, for example, inventory, the, the, the products that we buy, they change so frequently, the vendors that we use, there, there's so much volatility in the metric and in the data that it makes more sense to give those types of users an iQuery versus a standard dashboard. So, okay. But I, I think the key here, though, it's, it's all, I mean, this is about your world. You have to understand your world and your users and, and are they central or spread out? There's all kind of factors that could change your mind one way or another. Hi, how are you? Good. Um, I'm working in a telco company too, and, and I have a question about the volume. You said that you handle millions of rows. Uh, in the Tableau desktop, you, you know that it's not a big issue because uh, you can handle with that your machine. But uh, in the Tableau server using the web authoring, do you need to do aggregation or something like that? Or is it enough to connect directly with the raw data? We ha uh, in the sales, we have a data set that is uh, about 10 million rows, and it performs well, at least in our, right? So we do have a whole IT department that works really hard and has apparently configured it really well, is from my understanding. I, I can't tell you much about that, but they've done an awesome job for us, and it performs well. So it's definitely possible. <laughs> I, I stole your mic. Thank you. So uh, just to kind of elaborate on what Sean is saying as well, um, I, I want to be very clear that for our iQueries, we're actually using extracts, not live connections. So that's a huge, huge performance gain, just that alone, right? So 
Tableau is going to compress the hell out of your data when you make it into an extract, right? That's how it works. That's the beauty of Tableau. So as long as your data is well formed and you're putting it as an extract, you shouldn't have any kind of performance issues. Now, if you're looking at row level detail, meaning that you're not putting it on the visualization to visualize something, you just want to look at a million rows, a million work order numbers or account numbers or something like that, then yeah, you're probably going to have some issues. Um, but as far as just visualizing, we, we, our largest data set is around 1.2 billion rows. It's like literally every customer transaction that we've ever had in the history of the company. You can actually put that in as an extract. And again, it will perform very well if you're visualizing it. If you want to see the individual rows, it doesn't work, really work great as a query tool per se. Okay. Yep. I don't know about you, but I love to scroll through 1 billion rows. It's my that, thing to do. that is literally what I do in my free time. <laughs> I'm glad we have a lot of time for Q&A. This is great. I was wondering how many of these um, business analysts end up graduating to getting a client um, account or you know, access to desktop? Correct, yeah. Um, I don't know if we've, we've definitely had one person that was really close, at least in sales. He was, we had an open position and it was between him and one other user and we actually went the other way, but it, but it was because they were both super qualified, not because he wasn't qualified enough. Um, and that's uh, in about only a year of him using it. And that's another difference too. So in my department, right, we're centralized. So we, the, the main user here that I'm talking about, we interact all the time. He's only one floor different than we are. And he's one of our top users. Where in John's world, right, these are people that are scattered all throughout the country. So them becoming a Tableau developer and moving to Denver is a lot less attainable in that example. Um, thanks for the presentation. It was really helpful. Okay. Awesome. Um, so what are your thoughts on kind of Tableau's direction with web authoring? And do you get any pushback with you know, not being able to format or create parameters? Or I mean, there's some limitations from the desktop client. There are. Um, I, my understanding is, and I, and for, we were practicing our presentation, so I didn't get to see all of Keynote today. I don't know if they covered anything on web authoring today or not. Um, but uh, in the past, I've seen them. Their goal is to basically make web authoring as good as desktop someday. Um, and, and, new, and when new versions are released, we usually see some, say some one, new, one or two new things that a user can do in web authoring. But it's pretty critical you know, you understand what those differences are, right? And you may be able to teach, if it's something that, so we have a metric that's very something, something, not something, and very not something. <laughs> Um, if that makes sense. And so we like to sort it that way, but Tableau is going to natively alphabetize it and put things kind of in the wrong place. And in desktop, it's easy to just drag that to the right place. In web authoring, in order for a user to get that to sort right, we have to teach them how to or, or write, and we could do this, we could write it too, but basically create a calculation that they can move and then turn, you know, un unshow the header, uncheck show header so that it kind of disappears, and, but it still sorts the right way. So it could change your training program, knowing what those limitations are. So it's just good to know what a user can and can't do. And, and to have open communication. I, this kind of goes for our regular dashboards, too. But we work really hard with our customer base. And we consider our users our customers um, with just tell us when something doesn't look right. Tell us when it's broken. Every time they bring an issue to us, the first thing that I expect that I say and I expect my team to say is thank you for, bringing, you know, thank you for reaching out to us so that they don't have that barrier that we're um, annoyed that they found something that's broken and, and we're you know just Ugh, I'm gonna fix this now like because we we have so much stuff out there there's no way for us to run every use case of every dashboard and see if it's all working right so I don't know if that helps but yeah, it does. okay cool yeah while they're moving the microphone it, it to piggyback off of your second question of if, if there's much pushback these analysts don't know what they don't know so if we teach it to them they're not looking for things like running parameters and things of that nature. They're just using it as a supplement for 
you know, finding some data to put into an Excel spreadsheet. So. I mean, the vast majority of those users really still just use it in that one-on-one way of, I'm just trying to get numbers, and I'm going to move on with my day. Have you run into any issues, or how have you avoided running into issues with um, users creating like false conclusions from the data, from the way they put it together? Like, I know you can take calculate, you can make data say anything you want, but. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, you know, we haven't seen a lot of that. Testing. Um, Testing. It is a, it, it's of course a risk, but you know, I, I think that's a risk that always exists, whether you're using iQuery or not. Um, and it's a struggle we've always had in sales that we have one group that may say, you know, the number's X and another group that says it's some number's Y and then Y are you guys, right? And it, it usually comes down to very minute details and like how we categorize things. So it's, it's not a bigger problem because of iQuery, I guess is what I'm really getting at. It's, it's not a reason not to do it. Hi, um, I saw in your presentation that you use the workbook as the entrance point for the user. Mm -hmm. Is there a, a reason why you didn't go for the raw data sources as the first entry point? Uh, user, so our, our users that are iQuery users are used to consuming dashboards that same way, right? The, all the other normal dashboards that they go to, and one of the fears I sort of have is that you guys think this is all we do is we just stand up iQuery environments and we let everybody else do them <laughs> is. That's not the case. We work really hard and we, we have awesome dashboards that most of our users use. So when somebody's an iQuery user, they're already used to going, finding the dashboard that they need and then kind of interacting with it. So we felt this is a really natural way for them to get to, to the same place. Um, you can also, in that front page, tell them how frequent the data is. So we do a daily refresh. But if you get in at 8 a.m., it may not be ready. It may, be, you know, it may not be ready until about 8.45. So it'll tell them right there, basically, do I have yesterday's data in there or not, before they even get in, so they, they know how, how uh, fresh the data is, basically. No questions, really? Because <laughs> Sorry, one, one sec here while Lucas runs the mic. Just a quick question. Uh, what kind of data sources are you presenting to your users? Are they views? Are they Excel spreadsheets? Are they cubes? That's a great question. <laughs> you got two mics right next to each other. So yeah, use one or the other. Huh? All right, you can. <laughs> And in sales, we have our own uh, SQL databases, so we just code, we just create views basically, and then just select star as our extract from whatever view. And that's how we run our regular dashboards as well. The, the environment that we have, by the way, the iQuery environment data source, we actually use across uh, many of normal standard dashboards as well. So when that updates, all these other update with the same dashboards. It's really just a super rich, everything you want to know about every sale that just happened. Um, through you know through 2016, so we create that data source gives us all kinds of possibilities, but it's also what we stand up our iCore environment on. Thank you so much, guys.